today on Boomer's Retirement Reconsidered. Don't look for the baby boom generation to bail out of the workforce anytime soon. Work means more than just a paycheck, and boomers want to make the most of the years ahead. Dictionary definition of retirement is to withdraw, to go to bed. And I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of retirement I want to have. Bill Huss retired from a corporate job and now teaches part-time, volunteers as a big brother, and does chores on a community farm. It's a very humbling experience. 22-year Air Force veteran Sandra Penny launched a new career in education. I feel great. I feel like I have a lot of energy. I feel like I have so much more to give. Welcome to Boomers, redefining life after 50. I'm Nancy Mills. And I'm Mark Mills, and today we're antiquing in the historic seacoast town of Essex, Massachusetts. And there are lots of great shops here, Mark. Oh, there certainly are. Well, surveys show that about three quarters of Boomers plan to continue working past traditional retirement age. Many want to work part time, some want to change careers or even start a business. Well, retirement used to be an event, the goodbye party and the gold watch. Today, it's more of a process that evolves over time. All right, let's go in and check this place out. Oh, good idea. Okay, so you've done the nine to five for the past 35 years, and now comes Miller time. Well, before you regrip your golf clubs and head off to Boca, consider this. Retirement may not be the picnic you've been planning. That golden handshake your father got when he retired is feeling a lot less firm these days. And for many boomers, that can spell trouble down the road. The median household today has a total income of $48,000. People just don't have enough money. Um, and they're finan most people are financially pressed. And then we're talking about changes in the retirement system, which is going to give them less relatively than they have today. And so they're really going to feel very pressed if they continue to retire at 62. Admit it, you were thinking 52. Well, boomers believe it can be done even if they didn't make millions in the dot-com speculation of the 1990s. Bill Huss retired from an energy services company two years ago after the company was taken over. At about the same time, his mother passed away. So I no longer have any parents and it gives you a sense that life is finite. And so all of that coming together, that here's an opportunity to do something else. Uh, you know, there's only so many years that one has to, to do what is really important. And so, uh, you know, I just decided to take the plunge and, and do some of the things that I've been thinking about. This may not be exactly what he was thinking about, but Bill's retirement is certainly not about being cooped up. <laughs> It's a very humbling experience. You realize that there are no uh, rank and privileges uh, when you're dealing with farm animals. But he does find the work here gratifying. Bill volunteers at the Codman Community Farm in Lincoln, Massachusetts, doing various farm chores and helping the farm draft a business plan. He also volunteers as a big brother and teaches business students at Babson College. I don't even like using the term retirement anymore. I mean, in a way, it's a career change. It's a lifestyle change. It's, it's freedom, it's flexibility. It's saying, you know, how, how can I make my life worthwhile you know, over, over the next years? For Bill, making life worthwhile means contributing to the community. He's found several opportunities through Executive Service Corps, an agency that connects volunteer professionals like Bill with nonprofits that can use their skills. Like many boomers who came of age in the 1960s and early 70s, Bill misses the social activism of his youth. I think the most influential factor in, in my life was really the time that I went to college, that I was in college in the early 70s, and that was right at the tail end of a lot of social consciousness raising and activism, whether it be the Vietnam War or the War on Poverty or Civil Rights. Uh, there were a lot of college students who were very interested in trying to make things better and it was not nearly the, the business orientation or the financial orientation that I think we see now. And I think as many people in my generation, I got away from that to some extent. I, I had a career in energy conservation in an environment which, which made me feel good, but I think I was also wanted to, to progress in my career and make more money and do all the things that 
I think pulled me away from some of the ideals that I had lived with in my college years. And so I really wanted to get back to that. Judy Goggin of Civic Ventures says that sentiment is common among boomers. Hi, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. They're the generation who heard uh, John F. Kennedy say, ask not what the country can do for you, but what you can do for the country. So they were activists, many of them, at that time. And perhaps now that they have more time and are, are able to think and act a little differently than their high-producing uh, midlife careers, that they might, they might find a way to actually have a big social impact now that they've, they've got some discretionary time and want to work in different ways. In fact, a survey done by Civic Ventures and the MetLife Foundation found that nearly 60% of leading edge baby boomers are interested in taking jobs that serve their communities and help those most in need. There are some people who, who have studied this age and stage of life who think that as we get older we start thinking more about meaning and purpose and a legacy and what we want to leave of ourselves on this planet. So some of it is deferred uh, dreams that they may have had when they were in their idealistic younger days and for others it's more connecting with the idea that I'm not going to be here forever and I still have something to contribute and give back before, before I leave the planet. They may not be around forever, but baby boomers are staying healthier and living longer than past generations. Combine that with today's less physically demanding work, and the traditional idea of retirement is getting a pink slip. The dictionary definition of retirement is to withdraw, to go to bed. And I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of retirement I want to have. And it isn't the kind of retirement that Jane Carolan wanted either. I'm realizing more and more, yeah. I'm going to be retiring, and I don't want to just drift into it. I think it's, it's, it's the, your last opportunity to really be creative and, and give back and, and have, a, have take in and just have a creative life. Jane worked for an architecture firm, but she was looking for more autonomy and flexibility in her work. I left, and I took the winter to think about what I wanted to do, and a friend suggested I call a coach. What does it feel like to have all of these amazing things starting to happen in your business? People opening doors for you? Um, it's pretty amazing. I feel more confident. I Jane called like Lynn Schreiber, who helped Jane mentor. develop an idea for a business that had been percolating for some years. Called House Tales, the business provides house histories and combines everything Jane loved about work without the office politics and personality clashes. One of the first things I said to my coach is that I, um, I feel like I have about 10 good years of work in me and that at this point in my life, in my 50s, I feel really focused and really confident and really feel like I'm going to take off in a way that I never felt before. And I'd like to take that energy for 10 years and the money that I'm going to make and, and just gear all that to retirement. I love to do research and write. I would do it no matter what. I would be doing my own projects. But to keep doing this just feels like the perfect fit. And it's something that will keep me young, I think. So it's, I'm excited. I think it's the perfect segue. So many boomers are pursuing their dream job, while others are rediscovering the activism of their youth. Kind of reconnecting with the 60s while in their 60s. Thank you very much. Coming up, troops to teachers, from the Air Force to the classroom. But first, look your best, be yourself with David Kibbe. If we could replace the idea of looking youthful with looking vital, that's a wonderful goal for people. David Kibbe is a New York fashion and beauty expert who helps men and women be their best at any age. The only thing that I would say technically to do is as you evolve rather than mature, you shouldn't be wearing cheap looking clothes, you should be wearing quality. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to cost that much, but they should be good, good fabrics, right silhouette, that kind of thing. It makes a big difference. You can wear all kinds of fun and funky things as long as they're right for your style. You look so much better when I put you in the cool shade. I wouldn't really do anything to your hair, to tell you the truth, because the silver that's coming in is going to look better. Your hair is going to look better as it starts to get silvery. So hair, skin, and eye are a unit. That's really important to remember. And anything you do to your hair or anything you do with clothes should always be in harmony with your natural undertone. So Robert, here you are. Clean, sleek lines, beautiful fabrics. Everything is very elegant, cashmere, lightweight wool, that long lean drape. You look great. 
Oh, Mark, look, Simon and Garfunkel. Wow, boy, do they look young there. <laughs> yeah, those are two guys that have reinvented themselves. Yeah, they certainly have. Well, just how realistic is it to walk away from your old career and head for something new and more exciting? Well, that might depend on your finances. Yeah, boomers may redefine aging, but they can't change the fact that the bills still have to be paid. Fortunately, some employers need older, skilled workers to stay on the job. Many of us now you know, are financially in a position that, that we can retire earlier than, than perhaps our parents could. I think it probably could be one of the most fulfilling chapters of your life. Because you're, you're not burdened with all that other stuff anymore. You're not answering to your boss, your kids are grown up. There's a lot more freedom and room for you and I think that's what scares people. But I think for somebody like me it's like, whoa, this is going to be great. For boomers like Bill Huss and Jane Carolan, retirement has meant new opportunities. And just like they did in their 20s, this generation is redefining what this new stage of life, retirement, is all about. Many people are reevaluating how they want that to look. And most people, with the possible exception of my husband, couldn't play golf for 30 years, so um, every day. While retiring to pursue your dream or to work on your short game may be an option for some of us, for many, perhaps most boomers, Hanging it up at a young age simply isn't financially doable. Jean Prue Dibner worked for years in high tech. As a manager at Digital Equipment and IBM, she was responsible for hundreds of employees and multi-million dollar budgets. And at some point in time when the computer market began to slow down, I decided that this was the time for me to do what I really wanted to do at that point in my life. So volunteered for early, our early retirement package. With guaranteed benefits and a healthy investment account, Jane figured she could comfortably retire and pursue her love for sculpture. But then, the stock market bubble burst. I retired in October at the age of 58 uh, with a thought that I had really provided for myself financially. Uh, and then with the uh, drop in the uh, stock market, I uh, continued to begin, at some point in time, realized that I really wasn't okay. And that uh, whatever it was I chose to do, I also needed to be able to um, have an income stream as well. Fortunately, Jean's been able to turn her sculpture into a money-making concern. But the average boomer can't afford to toss in the towel to pursue their dream, at least not right away. The idea that you're going to stop your main job in your 50s and take on something else that is fulfilling but doesn't pay very well um, doesn't seem realistic. Most people are going to need to earn uh, as much as they can throughout their 50s. And so there's going to be a time where you can shift to your dream job. It's going to be in your early to mid 60s, not your 50s. There are several key reasons for this less than rosy outlook, like shrinking social security benefits. Soon retirees will have to wait until age 67 to start receiving those benefits. Oh, and those fat company pensions? Forget about them. They're becoming a thing of the past. Unless you contribute to a 401k savings plan, you're not likely to have enough retirement savings. Basically what people have, they have their house. And that's about it. They have their house, their, and the lucky middle income people have some pension, and they have Social Security. In terms of saving outside of that, they have about $35,000. Not exactly the kind of nest egg needed to take you into your golden years. But the good news is that if you want to, or need to, keep working, there should be plenty of jobs out there. In fact, as the 76 million baby boomers start retiring, there won't be enough workers to go around. Well, there are already shortages, labor shortages in education and health care. So with the retirement of baby boomers, there are going to be uh, not enough younger people coming along to fill those positions. If we don't have placements, succession planning, training, and ability to keep some of those mature workers in the workplace, America's going to suffer. American economy is going to suffer. For people like John Spencer, that pain is his gain. I have really no whole option at this point but to work. A lot of people have second careers. Uh, they, they, they have already at retirement fairly well established someplace else, and then something happens in life, and then they, they realize that you know, they still have plenty of time to work, and they, they want to do it. And uh, for me, I want to be able to, 
to afford to do things that I enjoy doing, and I can't do it unless I'm working. John found work at DentaQuest, one company that has recognized the value of so-called mature workers. Everybody brings something different to the table, and the mature worker brings perspective, brings experience, brings the ability to say to people either relax, been through this, um, it's a challenge, we're going to make it, or wow, let's try this again in a different kind of a way. DentaQuest is one of several companies whose efforts to recruit, train, and keep older workers were recognized by AARP. We were probably recognized for creating an environment that was open and encouraging and then making sure that the tools and the resources were there for people to take advantage of. That makes it a fabulous place to work no matter who you are, but particularly for a mature worker, that's not always the environment that someone faces. Draper Laboratories in Cambridge, Massachusetts is another company singled out by AARP. Its flexible work schedules have allowed the company to keep seasoned engineers they might otherwise lose. Of all the people that come into our flexible program, 70% of them are returning retirees, so they don't want to leave it completely. They, they find it a part of them, it defines who they are. To a large extent, our work is who we are. So what is the best advice for boomers thinking about retirement? I don't see myself retiring and, and playing shuffleboard. I see myself maintaining a career, doing something that I like to do, maybe adjusting my hours so that I have some free time to uh, you know, explore some, some niches that I've always wanted to get into. But I, I don't see myself uh, quitting and uh, knitting. I've always had that retirement mentality. If I could work four days a week, that's fine. So for me, it's not going to be a drastic change, but it's going to give me a lot more freedom to pick and choose what I want. 76 million people retiring over the next X number of years is an enormous resource. And if just a small percentage of us, especially the first wave of us who came of age in the 60s with all of our idealism, if we could recapture some of that ide idealism and combine it with our resources, our wisdom, our experience, our skills. What could we change on the planet? I guess my advice would be um, not to just stay stuck or accept what, you've, what the institutions have given you as an image of who you are uh, going to be in this stage of your life. Um, that we really, if we take charge, we really do have a lot of freedom in uh, creating for ourselves the kind of lives that we want. Well, there again is that attitude of rewriting the rules that this generation has always had. And in challenging the conventional thinking about retirement, boomers may be able to do a lot to help others while also finding personal fulfillment. And coming up, Mark's money tip on the financial facts of life for career changers. And later, one boomer's journey from the Air Force to the classroom. And she's still flying high. Many boomers want to continue working beyond traditional retirement age, but on their own terms. And that often means working part time. One big question is whether the economy can accommodate millions of boomers who want to remain in the workforce beyond age 65. Now, some industries, especially those with knowledge-based workers or a high-skilled workforce, are expected to have a shortage of skilled workers in the future, and so they'll be very open to having older workers stay on. Of course, many businesses have been using part-time and temporary workers for years, so that trend fits nicely into the boomer desire for less demanding schedules. But other industries are in a very slow growth mode or facing intense global competition. They may not be interested in having older workers remain in the workforce for years ahead. The economy will have to make big adjustments for aging boomers, just as it did when the boomers were born and when they entered the economy in their 20s. With a little bit of luck and some planning, what the economy needs and what boomers want may coincide nicely. If boomers can continue to contribute and pay taxes, the economy will prosper and government revenues will grow and have a better chance of meeting the growing demands on Social Security and Medicare. Wow, Mark, look at these old toys. Aren't they cool? Wow, those are old, yeah. yeah. You know, when Sandra Sessoms Penny graduated from high school more than 30 years ago, a college education seemed like an impossible dream. The daughter of migrant workers, she had few resources, but she joined the Air Force and using the GI Bill eventually got a master's in education. Now in her 50s, she's enjoying a new career and helping young people to build their futures. Good morning, looking good, looking good, looking good. 
My name is Sandra Gloria Sussums Penny. Everyone calls me SP, even the students, their parents, the entire community. I'm from Fort Pierce, Florida, and I'm 50 years old this year. Um, in June, I celebrated my 50th birthday, and things just started to liven up in my life. Good morning, Ms. SP. Good morning. Oh, extra hello. Hi. And I'm here at Windsor High School as the assistant principal, and I've been here since July of this year. Nice cheers tonight, good morning. At the beginning of the day, I greet the students as they come into the building. You know, um, many of them may not have had a hello for the day. She's just gonna talk to you, make sure everything stay cool. All right, okay. all right, you're good. Windsor High School is, to me, it's a model school. We have 516 students uh, assigned here or who attend school here. We try to provide all of them an opportunity to learn. Did I hear a bell? My job as an assistant principal is to make sure it's a safe environment, a learning environment, and a fun environment for them. I had a whole different life altogether. You would never expect that from just looking at me. I spent nearly 22 years in the United States Air Force, and I started out as an aircraft electrician on C-130 aircraft. And then my last 12 to 13 years in the military, I was a paralegal and a law office manager. And initially, I wanted to become a lawyer. And I took the LSAT a couple of times and quickly changed my mind. I said, this is really not what I want to do. And I heard about the program called Troops to Teachers, which is a program which, which um, supports military folks transitioning from the military into the field of education. And I had been a Sunday school teacher in various places and worked with kids and with my son and his friends. And I decided education, maybe. You don't know how to do the worksheet? Let's look at something. I do hope to go further uh, with the doctorate's degree. I do hope to eventually be in a position to, to perhaps uh, make policy. Because there's some problems with that situation. As we talked about it, there are a lot of problems with that. I do not have my doctorate yet. I'm, yet I'm one of the ABD students, all but the dissertations. Savion, Savion. My next goal next immediate goal would be to obtain a principalship. And I know you don't bother to argue or have a discussion or anything, you just get on the bus and ride, right? Okay, that's all I expect. <sighs> I feel great. I feel like I have a lot of energy. I feel like I have so much more to give. I'm one of the blessed ones. I do have my health, for the most part. Um, I feel like my mind is still open to new ideas. Say it again like you mean it. Professora. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Keep working hard. Thank you. For someone who's in my age category, 50 or plus, uh, and you, you haven't really found your niche in life, I would recommend that you do volunteer work, find out what you really want to do, and start pursuing that. Realize that you have energy, 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 uh, and you don't know how well or how helpful you can be to someone by just reaching out uh, out of your comfort zone, probably. Well, there's a boomer who's full of energy and has a lot to give. Yeah, Sandra was picked as Teacher of the Year, and I'm sure she'll be a principal one day. Oh, yeah, she's heading that way. All right, let's see what's coming up in our next episode. Next time on Boomers, we head for the Swiss Alps with Untours to get the benefits of a tour package without the get-on-the-bus regimentation. We'll join the Rhodes Scholars who turn vacationing into a hands-on educational adventure. And we'll meet one boomer who has refined the art of solo travel. Pack your bags next time on Boomers, Redefining Life After 50. Well, that's it for this week's program. Thanks for being with us. Join us next time on Boomers, Redefining Life After 50. So how do you like that frame? I like it. I think yeah. it'll look nice in the uh, living room. Yeah, let's put a mirror in there and hang it over the piano. Yeah, good idea. Hear more in-depth interviews, link to experts and information, find useful tools, connect with other boomers, and send us your stories, all at boomerstv.com.